Hello and welcome back to another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with is Dr. Allison Powell. So thanks again for joining us, Allison. Can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I am now the director of the Digital Learning Collaborative, which is an organization that supports um, the research, networking, collaboration, and learning um, for online blended and digital schools and also the organizations and companies that support them. But I've also been in the field since the late 90s, um, starting online and blended schools in the Clark County School District in Las Vegas and been a teacher, administrator, and then um, went on to work more at the national level supporting schools um, at IDACOL um, and doing the research policy setting standards and showcasing what schools um, have been doing with online and blended learning. So it's been a lot of fun and seeing it all come to fruition now. All right. So obviously over the last number of weeks, depending on where folks are, we've had a, a significant disruption to how the school you would normally run and the nature of learning that students are, are getting right now and even the amount in some cases. What can school leaders do to accommodate the unusual nature that this school year is ending and the next school year may be beginning? Um, I think now that we're very close to the end of the school year, I know Arizona here is wrapping up this next week. I think the best things that we can do right now are kind of learn from what we just experienced um, and reflect on that. So collecting feedback, not just from the families and students, but from your staff and your faculty, um, what went well, what didn't go so well, and how can we um, learn from those different lessons and help us to plan for next year. And I think the other big thing is the communication. I think people just want to know what's going on. And you may not know what's going on, but even just kind of maybe sending out a weekly communication, just kind of updates on what's happening, how you're closing out the school year, um, what to expect over the summer, or even coming back in the fall. And if you may not have all those answers yet, but um, just sending out regular, consistent communication, I think, are the two big things for right now. Okay. Now, you mentioned collecting data and being able to sort of plan for the future. One of the things that we do know about pandemics is there's likely going to be a second wave, even if the second wave isn't as massive as what we've experienced right now. There's likely going to be local flare-ups. So some districts may have to close, some states may have to close, and we might end up and close nationally again. What can school leaders do to make the next time this happens a little more seamless than the sort of abrupt nature that we had this time around? Yes, and I think even just having the pandemic, this is going to happen again. We've seen hurricanes down in the south or in other places. So just if the COVID-19 goes away eventually and we get a vaccine, like this isn't going to be a one-time thing. So having that plan in place for emergencies or even just rethinking how you do school and what it looks like. So I think coming up with a plan both for an emergency or whether it's a pandemic or natural disaster um, and just kind of what does school look like because next year we don't know what it looks like. You could be like you said coming in for a couple days a week or it could be a couple weeks and then going home for a couple weeks um, but I doubt there will be consistency in what the school year looks like in terms of face-to-face -face versus online. So I think the best way is um, not to feel alone. Like we've seen all over the internet and the news, like how creative teachers and school leaders have been. Um, so pulling your whole team together, like don't just do this alone. Use the data that you collected and the feedback and pull together a team with, include some parents and students, community members, you're probably going to want to get unions or policymakers involved too, but that's going to build that culture. You're going to get the buy-in for kind of both what does it look like when we have another emergency, but also this is your chance to create what a new school looks like on a day-to-day -day basis, even when there's not some kind of an emergency happening. So um, could you create kind of a new model of learning and 
um, like we said earlier, this, this has been going on for 20 plus years now. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel, but if you're looking at what other um, schools and districts in your state or even at the state level, I think almost all 50 states have some kind of online and blended learning program within them. And so you can look at them nationally. There's all kinds of case studies and videos and write-ups about these schools, but going to do some research and figuring out what works best for your students and your community and families um, and kind of designing that new model. And then you've got it once you have an idea of what that looks like, kind of figuring out what are those right tools and resources that you need um, to support that model, whether it's the technology, it might be new content, you might be creating it, but then you you need, then you need to think about the training, whether it's for yourself. Um, we, we're not expecting you all to be experts in all of this. So you as the school leader and your team are going to need some training, but also your teachers and the families and the students. You've been starting to do some of that this year, but what does that look like? And kind of creating more consistency. I think we've seen a lot of great teachers step up, but they're all doing their own thing within the same school and a parent or family. I've heard all these stories where this teacher is doing it this way and not talking to another teacher. So their kids are running around all over the place. And then sometimes they all have to be on together. So kind of creating more consistent models across a school to both support your teachers, your families and those students. So they know what to expect. Um, and then providing that training and seeking it out for yourself. I think, um, as you create those plans, putting all those things into consideration, I think will help create successful models for the future and knowing that you're going to have to iterate models over time. It's not just like this year, <laughs> like you can learn from that and being flexible. Like next year, if you move to a new model, it's not going to be perfect on the first day of school. And so you'll have that team now, if you put that together early on that you can go to and bounce ideas off and go continue to do research and keep it going. All right, perfect. Well, thank you very much, okay. Allison. So this has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with has been Dr. Allison Powell. Thank you.